Troy, your most recent news release appears to be extraordinary, but I'm going to need you to explain it to me. Drilling result, results in Quebec, yes? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Very, very strong results, Tracy. Um, and, and I would say not just this release, but th this release is a culmination of releases from our uh, summer exploration program at Bardifer. Uh, and Bardifer, as you know, is a zone of nickel, copper, cobalt mineralization uh, loca located on the North Shore uh, of Lake Superior in Quebec. Okay, and, and what the intention, the full intention of this summer program was from a drilling perspective, it was to expand and extend that known zone of mineralization. Um, overall, right from the first hole, which was very strong, right through to the 10th hole, which ended off the program very strongly, we did that. So we expanded mineralization at depth, we expanded mineralization on strike, so in both directions to the north and to the south, and continued to hit high grade nickel, copper, cobalt mineralization. This is for everyone at Investor Intel that's going, huh, we got a critical minerals play here for all intents and purposes. Again, nickel, copper, and cobalt, yes? It, exactly. Yeah, you look at you look at nickel, the, the nickel market right now it is um it is very, very much undersupplied. And you look at the demand profile going forward, especially class one nickel. And when I talk about class one nickel, all that really means is that's a nickel that is required uh, to make batteries for electric vehicles, okay, or, or batteries in general. And class one nickel, um, you look out to 2030, uh, some projections say that you're going to need 600% more class one nickel. And where you get class one nickel from is nickel sulfide deposits, which is which, which is what we have at HPM, which is what Bardifer is. So in reading your 2022 summer drilling program results, can you tell us uh, what your infrastructure is like in Quebec where these results were found? Yeah, it, it, the project itself, HPM, it's in the Manicouagan region um, and, and it's on the North shore of of the St. Lawrence River. So it's north of um, it's north of uh, Bay Como or Septiel, south of Fermont. And, and that area has fantastic infrastructure. And what I mean by that is it has road access. It doesn't only have road access, it has rail. And very importantly, that rail goes down to the North Shore uh, of, uh, of the St. Lawrence to a deep water port. Um, and it also has hydroelectric facilities. So there's a hydroelectric facility, the Hart June hydroelectric facility within kilometers of the project. So all of the critical pieces of infrastructure, um, road, rail, uh, and power are within kilometers of the HPM project. And so for those of you reading this news release going PXRF, um, if I read this properly, uh, this is a portable X-ray fluorescence technology. So you might have more than just nickel, cobalt, and copper because that's all it actually can identify. Did I read that correct? Yeah, well, so, so that's what we're analyzing for. Um, so, you know, a, a PXRF, it, it's, uh, it's a common instrument that's used um, in our business uh, to get field level results or an indication of results. How we've applied the, the PXRF is, is, is in, a, in a different way, I, I would say in a more progressive way, where we stood up a, a completely unbiased sampling process. Um, and that unbiased sampling process, the samples are then analyzed with the PXRF, and that's how we compile this data to then be able to communicate it to the market. But it's also, um, it's also important for us internally um, because it allows us to continue to progress our work and not have to uh, have our team at a, at a standstill waiting for lab results. So we can continue to work on the results, we can continue to interpret, we can continue to model, we can continue those critical path elements internally um, and not be at a standstill waiting for lab results. Of course, I'm aware of your formidable background, technical background, very senior technical background. I know you're dying to tell us some of the highlights from a technical perspective. Would you mind hitting on those, starting with the fact, of course, these results were very near surface. Just give us the technical highlights, please. <laughs> yeah, the technical highlights. Here we go. Yeah, starting with the most recent uh, BDF 10, uh, 2210, which is the last drill hole that we put out, uh, had 20 meters, um, over 20 meters of 1.27% uh, nickel equivalent. Um, and 
hey, that that's that's starting at 29 meters downhole. So 29 meters downhole is uh, you know that that's the end zone in a in a, that's from the blue line in in a hockey rink. Like <laughs> that's pretty shallow, um, and, and that's exactly what we want, right? Um, because. You, you have shallow accumulations, near surface accumulations of high grade uh, mineralization, and that leads us to believe um, that Bardifer has the potential to be open pit amenable uh, or, or amenable to, um, to open pit mining or open pit extraction, which um, is definitely a net positive for, uh, from a project development perspective, from a cost perspective. Now, these results you know they come uh following very strong results overall uh from this summer drill program for example um you know starting off with part of one the first hole that was drilled which was a, a hole that stepped down dip of previous drilling to expand mineralization um and that that hole hit 18 meters of 1.95 percent uh nickel equivalent which is extremely strong um you know you look within that interval that's eight meters of 3.38 percent nickel equivalent which tracy you know nickel grades are uh, you know not everyone has a good feel for nickel grades if you were to put that eight meter interval into a copper equivalent that would be over 10 percent copper um and, and our strongest hole of the program, which was, you know, one of the strongest holes uh, drilled globally um, in the nickel exploration space in 2022, was uh, BDF 2 uh, That hole hit 121 meters of massive, semi-massive disseminated sulfide mineralization, um, 121 meters at 1.39% nickel equivalent. Or if you put that into a copper perspective, that's over 120 21 meters at 4% copper equivalent. So very, very strong results, very high grade, um, continue to demonstrate uh, continuity in terms of grade, in terms of mineralization, and really expand, significantly expand the Bardifer, or Bardifer zone of mineralization at depth and on strike. And really importantly, it remains completely open. And when I mean completely open, um, there is room for expansion on strike. There's room for expansion at depth, and it's unconstrained by drilling. So that sets up, you know, a natural progression. Where do we go from here? We continue to expand Bardifer. So, so further to this, I, I, I'll be honest with our investor Intel audience. I took your several pages of charts and threw them over to. Dean Bristow, Peter Clausey, and Byron King, and said, what do these mean? All the responses were very favorable. Uh, so you have a lot of highlighted numbers here. Uh, which, which one are you most proud of? Hey, when you look at, um, I, I just highlighted some numbers from, from Barter for O2. Uh, that that was the second hole we drilled in the program. Uh, that 121 meters. That that's a phenomenal, very material intersection of of nickel bearing sulfide mineralization. And you know, you look at that from a couple of perspectives. One is the the grade and the thickness of that mineralization. But the other thing that's important is the type of mineralization. Um, so you know, it, getting a bit deep into the technical weeds here, but talking about a magmatic sulfide system and we're seeing loop textures within the sulfides which is how this you know an indication for how those sulfides form and how those sulfides form based off the textures that we're seeing is truly from a magmatic system and what that says to me is look for scale magmatic systems have have, have the potential to be highly scalable and, and that leads us to the other aspects of what we did this summer which was a, a significant prospecting program at HPM, um, as well as regional geophysics. So you can start to see where we're at, where, where we're expanding Bardifer, expanding a known zone of mineralization, moving that forward into a resource estimation stage. We have uh, a number of near surface or at surface occurrences of nickel bearing sulfide mineralization on a trend. Um, stacking up a number of targets on a trend. And then we also flew our regional geophysics um, for the remaining portion of the property, which highlighted a significant number of EM or electromagnetic anomalies um, on the site, which we, uh, in our exploration model, equate to imaging uh, those systems or those near surface sulfide bearing mineralization systems that we're interested in. So it goes from 
resource, building out a resource at Barter Fur with a pipeline of de-risk exploration targets at HPM, which will demonstrate the, the camp scale potential that I was just mentioning. For those of you interested in learning more about these results and reviewing these drill results, which there's a lot of there's a lot of bolded ones here, Troy. Uh, yeah. Please go to their website and or email their team. Thank you, Troy. Thank you very much.